We have so many amazing colleagues that we've worked with over the years. And yeah. some of them, including you. Well, thank you. Some of them stick around. Other ones, well, they let's just say we've had a falling out. No. Um, yeah, and you. I mean, our, our yes, you, our friendship. Are is, those the skeletons in your closet? Those... <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But yeah, you're right. We have we have amazing uh, colleagues uh, who have become great friends, um, such, yeah, such yeah. talented people. Yeah, I agree. Now, we've only been doing this for over 20 years, so... (laughs) I know. (laughs) Some of those people we know, you know, (laughs) pretty well. That's I loved our conversation with Veronica where uh, she was talking about how wonderful it is just to have time, you know, to spend time with each other. And as people may know about the dubbing process, we don't actually often work together while we're doing that. We we build the relationships outside of that, which is also... uh, Wonderful. Yeah. And even though we all have a, a common uh, bond in the voice acting, uh, what's nice about a lot of our colleagues is they have other uh, ways to express their creativity and uh, career choices uh, or, mm-hmm. or inspiration early on. So, yeah, it's great to talk to those people. Like me. Oh, Erica. Hi. Hi. Eric- so good. So nice of you to drop by. It's not oh, Erica well. Schroeder. It's Erica it is Schroeder? the Erica Schroeder, as I commonly call her. It is her. the yeah. other E.S. That's my other name in the business. <laughs> we've got Eric Stewart, and we've got Erica Schroeder. Uh, the, wow, the female what a Germanic, nice... you know. What a nice surprise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought I'd drop in. Yeah, so, so happy that you're here with us, and I can't think of anything better to do than to get into it. Let's do it. Welcome to The Heart of the Cards, a conversation about creativity, inspiration, and dealing with what we're dealt. Hey, this is Dan Green. And Eric Stewart. And... Erica Schroeder, otherwise known as... Erika Schroeder. (laughs) (laughs) Only took me like 40 years to figure out that my name was fully German. Uh, The day that I realized that was just like... Much too late in my life, but I was like, wait, wait was there like a, like it's German or maybe another, like what? I just didn't put two and two together. Like I didn't think I of see. it as like two German names put together. And I don't think that was my parents' intention. It just kind of <laughs> happened, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. And the good thing is you do a very good German uh, accent, unlike... There's an actor. I have to just Uh-oh. say this because I wanted Uh-oh. to rant Uh-oh. about Uh-oh. scandal. This. Scandal. Uh-oh. There's an there's an actor on camera that's doing a commercial for a phone company where he portrays Einstein, <laughs> and it is the worst. Oh my God, Eric! Worst, Eric! Accent. I am so annoyed by it that not only will I never use that phone company, but I also. I never want to work with that actor. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Listen, if you're going to was... do that, I don't want to actually, no. I'll work with the actor, but I won't work with the casting director. Thank you. Okay. Like, come on. It was on like, last night. Like, that's the and best Ken... Einstein you got? Ken I'm commented sorry, I had on to it. rant about that. No, yes, no, no. Please. Ken commented on that last really? night. Really? Is Erica's that's husband. My husband. For followers he was like, there. that is the worst Einstein I've ever Isn't it? Right? <laughs> I was just like, it's like, so it was funny so, that you it was said so that like, today. <laughs> I'm going to cast this actor because he's funny and that's great. Very talented person. We're going to. But yeah, he probably can play he Einstein. Was, <laughs> he was just as offended as you. I'm just telling you. That's why that made me there, laugh so hard when you said that. There you go. OK, I had to get that out of my system. I'm sorry. It just bothered me. Anyway, yours I'm is glad fantastic. somebody finally addressed it because I think you speak for a lot of people. Out <laughs> anyway, welcome to our show. <laughs> Yeah, and welcome to all of our listeners and followers to the Heart of the Cards. This is episode 15, and we are so delighted to be able to share this time with our amazing colleague, Erica Schroeder, not only a fantastic voiceover artist in terms of portraying characters and so many things that you've grown up on, and also things that are releasing in the future, and things that are playing right now, but Erica is also a fantastic stage actress, as well as a, an amazing singer, which I believe is how you and Ken, your husband, who also created the theme for The Heart of the Cards, um, uh, intertwined initially. Is that correct? It is. It is. We met at the um, Blues in the Night audition for Cleveland Playhouse, um, and then I met him two days later at my callback. But um, his recollection is that I was flirting with him, and I was just trying to explain, like, no, I was not flirting. I was being friendly 
to everyone behind the table, as I always am, male and female. So it's like this ongoing argument. And you only argument. married one of those people. So. I only married one of them. But it's funny yeah. because I was like, I definitely was not flirting. I was being friendly. But it's like, <laughs> it's an ongoing argument for 25 years now. Yeah. You flirted well, with me. Maybe. No, I didn't. Well, what's it, what's interesting uh, for me, when, um, when I first met you, um, mm-hmm. I really thought of you as, oh, this is a very talented um, musical theater actor, singer, who is now mm-hmm. doing voiceovers, which, of course, being a singer is very helpful in uh, how we approach right. inflection and um, which is, you know, Timing. Having, a good, right. having a good ear. But um, I, I always was so impressed with that part of your background because um, the, the shows you were working on at the time when we first met and... Um, just the the idea that you were um, doing this other very impressive uh, c- uh, career choice, and then Thank you're like, you. and I'm going to do this too. So your background, <laughs> your your life experience with that, to me, is also an, an, a great um, example to our fans who listen, who uh, do a bunch of different things because you do something that I mean, obviously, I'm a I'm a live performer, but not in that way. And I think that your transition is probably or your your combination is probably a really good um, example to a lot of the Mm -hmm. people who are trying to Mm -hmm. figure out what they're doing. Thank you so much. Yeah. So live performance is important in any form. You know, we've got Eric with his uh, singing performance, um, which requires so much stage presence, not not just an incredible voice and instrument to begin with. And then, um, you know, my my stage performance and um, Dan's stage performance um it's it's all relevant and it it's it's more than relevant it is it mm-hmm. is half of the story and it's it's half of how we got to be where we are um absolutely you and i both do some teaching and i'm sure you've used the phrase or something like it that acting is the most important part of voice acting yes yes and, yes absolutely yeah. i say it all the time the voice and is so coming you later can, you can you can broaden that out to just other kinds of stage performance yeah eric you're going to yeah. say yeah no, i was going to say so if we go back to uh, mm-hmm. early on in ES's, um, the other ES's um, <laughs> the other life. ES's. Um, Love it. The environment, the the environment. I'm 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 always curious of how that household was. Are, were there other creative influences around parents, uncles, aunts, whatever, friends? Um, was it uh, was it not that way? Where where did you find that first? inspiration that this is where was yeah to to frame it in the the hero's journey i guess we could liken this to a call to adventure kind of thing yeah yeah yeah. you know it's funny because i don't remember the moment it started because my mother said you came out of the womb dancing Mm -hmm. that's what she that's (laughs) what she said painful (laughs) well i did come out feet first y'all um so you technically cannot call me a poop head that's a terrible (laughs) joke (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but I, I mean, I did. Yeah, I, I was breech. So but um, my mom said, you know, you came out dancing. That was my dancing and singing were my first loves. Entertainment. Eric, you and I have that in common. Just like mm-hmm. we are also entertainers, you know. Um, and it, it was always so important to me um, to to perform, you know, even at a very, very young age. And I wanted to be a rockette. That was my first uh-huh. dream. Um, it, what, what's funny about this story is that my parents, nobody in my family were performers. There was nothing to draw from whatsoever. Mm-hmm. It, but they were supportive, you know, very, always very supportive from the beginning of my life. I remember them being like, yeah, you can do anything. You can do anything you set your mind to. So, But I had 20 minutes of tap and 20 minutes of jazz a, a week with a five-minute shoe change. Wow. There's, that's it. Until I was 11, and then I had a midlife crisis, like, at 11, like, Mom, like, what does a dancer do, you know? And I remember her saying, like, a dancer dances? Like, she's like, why is this girl asking me these questions with such urgency and such um, fear and sadness, right? Because I was like, I don't know what a dancer really does. How do they earn a living? And I don't think I have these things. I I knew I had showmanship. They always put me in the middle, right? But I didn't Mm -hmm. have any technique. I I had nothing. You know, all I had was showmanship. All I had was that I moved really well. So my mom, you know, was like, all right, well, we'll take you to, we'll, we'll get you signed up for a real ballet school. I had never had a ballet class. So I think I 
I think I was 11 or 12, and I remember being at the back of the room, and it was the first time in my life, even though, I mean, I know that sounds dramatic. I was only 11, but it was the first time in my life where I said, no, I can't do this. <laughs> it's just like I wanted <laughs> I wanted to be able to do it so badly, but I was like my body was formed already. Like to really do it the right way, like I would have had to have danced, you know, every single day, three to four hours a day. And mm-hmm. we didn't have that money. We didn't have that time, mm-hmm. you know. And so and I And you went, didn't have that ambition. I, yeah, not to, you're correct. Not to slam you. That's not you, a de- you yeah, know, yeah, denigration, yeah. but. You are 100% correct. I didn't. I, I realized, you, no, you I don't want to. You didn't burn for that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I don't want to be a dancer. Yeah. I, I, I loved Shirley Temple. Um, right. Like Greg Abbey, I. I I, he saw a chorus line, right? Uh, that was yep. his first Broadway show. I um, yep. saw that, you know, and that was like, that was life changing. S- seeing it um, on TV, you know, um, right. seeing the movie, I was like, wow, you know, um, okay, this is what a dancer does. Or this is what a performer does. This is what a singer does. And I was always singing Whitney Houston songs and pop songs and like going to soundtrack studios and like laying down a couple tracks and things like that. Um, and everything just kind of came together by the time I was 14 when I fell in love with Shakespeare, deeply in love. Um, and I was like, oh, I'm an actor, singer, dancer, you know. Um, right. But as, as far as influences, I was gonna ask, I, yeah. I, I was going to ask you before you move on to the next chapter, I was going to ask you. So at age 11, you're in that class. This is the first time you've probably also been surrounded by a bunch of other students that are like, this is what I want to do. Right. Yes. They want to be ballerinas, you know, or they want to they want to be a you know ballet dancer men as well. Um, and this was probably also like, wow, there are a lot of people that are really good at this <laughs> specific thing. Right. Yes. Was that also did you also take note of that? Because I know oh. when I went to art school and I was an artist as, as a kid, when I went to art school and I was surrounded by my friends who really were artists, I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to be a musician. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's crazy that you just said that story because I have a, a story similar to that. Uh, it's my mother's story. I was like, I, I don't remember what age I was, but I was down in the basement and just like going through things. And I found all these art books, these sketchbooks. And then I found like, um, you know, an actual sketchbook with sketches in it. And I was like looking through it and I was like, wow, these are good. Like, they were portraits. They were incredible. And mm-hmm. I went upstairs, and I was like, Mom, I was like, what is this? And she was like, oh, yeah, those are mine. And I was like, wait, what? Like, you drew this? And she was like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was like, when? Like, what is this? I know nothing about this. What is this? And she said, well, I went to commercial art school for a year, but then I saw that everyone was better than me, and I thought, oh, I'll be a nurse. I was like, <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, literally, she said it that flippantly. And I said, like, you didn't have any moment of, like, total despair and sadness. Like, oh, maybe I'm not, you know, I'm not good enough. I can't live up to everyone else. Like, this is my dream. And she was like, no, nah, I just felt like, ah, oh, that's not practical. Like, I, I'm not that good. You know, everyone's better. I'll do this. I was like, wow. Like, Also at a different time in, in, in history, right, where, yeah. where unfortunately a lot of the arts were not the safe you know, a uh, financial choice to make, especially if you're uh, the head of a household or running, you know, take care of a family. Um, but wow, that exactly. is an interesting uh, sort of shift like that. And and so then again, that means that your comment about not being surrounded, maybe not being influenced by that, but it's in the DNA. Oh, your mother yeah. is obviously creative. Unbelievably creative. Like, and I, I mother very similarly to her. And that was like, the kids and I, we drew, painted, sculpted Mm -hmm. every single day. Like, that's all we did all day long. I was like, now we're going to paint. and Now we're going to, you know, we're going to make necklaces. And now we're going to go out into the garden and gather the vegetables. Like, I consider that art too, you know, like cultivating and growing things. But um, I was heavily influenced by her as a mother in terms of incorporating creativity in my kids childhood you know they Mm -hmm. uh, there was no program for them to go to because at that point we were living in Pennsylvania there was nothing there that I could afford that we could afford um and I just was home with the kids all day long and I was like I'm gonna go crazy like 
I need some structure. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, I need some structure. So the structure was literally art. Like, we're just jumping from one art to the next. And that, and that was the whole day. And it was beautiful. And I I do miss it. It was stressful, but uh, but also a really beautiful time. <laughs> But yeah, my mom influenced me through her art, for sure. Another though thing that I observe about that story with your mom's checking out this commercial art path, mm-hmm. she was able to say, not for me, going to be a nurse, which I think also speaks to it wasn't her burning ambition. It was something she could do, like you could do dancing. But if you're really going to follow that path, it like, and people say this in different ways, it's something that you can't deny. Correct. Another way that people say it is, you know, if you can do, if you can make money doing anything but being a writer or being an actor, do that, you know, because it's not uh, necessarily a path that's going to reward you financially. But if you have that that creative ambition, it'll, yeah, pull you through. Those words are so important. Like like what you said, those words, people need to hear those words. They are very, very important. I was at the doctor yesterday and the doctor said, you know, had to ask me what I do for a living. You know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a voice actor and um, I'm an actor and I'm a voice coach. And he's like, oh, I always thought about doing that on the side. And I was like, oh, no, you did not just say that on the side. On the side, yes. <laughs> you did not just say that. Right? So he triggered me. I do some wacky voices. I do a great Schwarzenegger impression. <laughs> that's like, I mean, that's he was really, yeah, he was really cool. And I, I felt bad because I was like, hey, I don't want to destroy your dreams or anything. But. <laughs> it's not something you do on the side. I said, I use you as an example. Like, he's like, what do you mean you use me as, as an example? I'm like, well, I tell people, like, he wasn't a surgeon. I was like, but I was saying, like, the amount of time you put in to be a surgeon is the same amount of time you put into being an actor. A good one, anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you know what I mean. It, it's also, it's also. I mean, for, for me personally, um, I've gotten to the point where in my life there are, there are two categories to my creativity. There's what makes me money, and there's then there's what makes me whole. And mm-hmm. um, even if you know, I think if if your mother had uh, had the passion to that she still wanted to draw, putting the pressure on the monetary side of it um, is unfortunate because I I think that you can still enjoy that part of of expression without yeah. feeling the pressure of of the arts. And yes, I mean voice acting. I mean I feel very lucky to work in a career that is creative as well as every once in a while um, pays the bills. Um, but it's, and, I, and, and uh, Dan and I have uh, talked about this on previous podcasts, like that's, that's my job. It's my job that is, mm-hmm. uh, uh, the bonus is it's creative. Um, but that's not, my, that's not my passion. My passion is music. My passion is songwriting. But in terms of what's making me more money, there's not even a uh, there's not even a comparison. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but the but the voice acting. And, and I has think get... I think it also it's really really hard to to be successful as a singer songwriter. Harder than maybe it ever has been. Just one side note for our listeners out there. I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. No, no, and I I agree. But <laughs> it's also harder to be a voice actor. I mean, the amount of people, as Erica just true. said, the doctor that wants to dabble in it. Um, the amount of people that are now in the business. Um, you know, just it's like they're everywhere. And I'm not saying that everything is quality, but um, it used to be that, especially with animation and stuff that that's going on. Um, you know, very few people wanted to do that stuff. Now everybody wants to do that stuff. But I mm. I also feel like the um, the 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 pressure of that of that uh, find the creative outlet that's also going to pay your bills oh, is yeah. unfortunate. It's it's unfortunate. I think it's balance. I think you can you can you know if you are lucky enough to fall into a, a career that is creative and you can express yourself and you feel great about it. That's fantastic. But um, don't feel like you have to put that other stuff that you do uh, away forever. I because it's that. not paying the bills. It will only benefit the other things you do. I, I, you know, I'm working on two new songs right now over this weekend, which I haven't touched in a while. I put them aside for a bit and I just felt the inspiration. And it's changed my attitude this week. Mm-hmm. I feel more motivated to do other things. Yeah, because it, it was frustrating time. me. It was frustrating me as an undercurrent for the last couple of months that... Uh, why can't I write any lyrics? What's going on? Mm-hmm. 
And then, of course, I joke around. I'm now happily in love, which means I got nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because yeah, you, I'm going to now rename my doctor, Dr. Dabble, by the way. Cause <laughs> Dr. Dabble. <laughs> Dr. Dabble. Um, you know, so this is an interesting story. So you made me think of this, Eric. Um, well, my mom did do all the craft fairs at my school, and she was amazing. Like, her crafts were incredible. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, if people call anything a craft, you know what I mean? Like, yes. I'll stick this kit with this thing, and it's like that someone already created and put together. No, my mother made things from scratch that were mm. freaking gorgeous. Um, and every year she had a different medium. So she did get to ha- kind of live that part of herself, yeah. which is really cool. Um, and also, this is also what's funny. So she said, I'll just be a nurse, right? That was the first thing that came to her mind. Well, my mom was a nurse. My mom's mom was a nurse, and my mom's mom's mom was a nurse, and okay. I just voiced one on TV. <laughs> I, mean... <laughs> I love it. I, love I took it. the that's... easy way out. You know what I'm saying? That's right. No med- <laughs> medical school needed. I just needed to come up with a, a, so a clever easy. voice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's an old joke. I'm I'm not a doctor, but I play one on TV. That's yes, yeah. from uh, the 70s. But oh my God. um, so Erica, when you had a clearer understanding of what your creative path might be. Mm -hmm. Were there people that helped you along the way? Were there memorable helping hands or mentors that that you benefited from? That's a great question. I mean, so many, so many influences, so many teachers that each had, you know, each, each teacher, each like momentary mentor or, or lifelong mentor, teaches you a different thing about yourself, you know, or Mm. highlights a different thing that you didn't know you had, you know. Um, My first voice teacher, Muriel Nevins, she's she's passed on, um, was an incredible woman. And she was like, talked and looked like an opera diva. Um, She had these (laughs) like incredible sculptures all over her house and she was so artsy and she had so many bangles all over her. You know, every time she moved her arms, they just shook and they could hear like, she'd be a recording uh, engineer's worst nightmare. They'd be like, Muriel, take that off, take that off, take that off, take that. You know what I mean? You'd be like, (laughs) spend half the session her undressing herself with her baubles. But um, she was an incredible woman and I auditioned to be a part of her studio, like one of her students, when I was 13. And she said, you know, you have so much promise. There's so much incredible stuff in there, but you're not ready. Your voice is not ready. And I was like, what does that mean? You know what I mean? I'm thinking, what does that mean? Like one of my friends had started at 13 who had an incredible voice that she and I ended up doing all the musicals together. Um, But she was a different, like, level of maturity, her voice. So I came back a year later and, uh, you know, worked with her again. And she's like, you're ready now. And I was like, oh, thank thank goodness, because I don't want to wait any longer. But I studied with her, you know, once a week, um, every week for four years. And we sang, I sang Italian opera, French opera, German opera. And also she allowed me to sing musical theater. She made me wait, you know. And when the mm-hmm. musicals came around, she'd be like, OK, we're going to work on this, but we're going to do it the right way and we're going to do it the safe way. And we're going to. So she. And while while you were singing those German operas, you still didn't get a clue about your name. I'm sorry. I'm focused. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Not a clue. Yeah. But um, what was great. Well, but now that I've now that I've uh, interjected, you couldn't wait is a phrase you just used. Oh, yeah. And I, I think that just... also speaks to what we were just talking about. Right. Yeah, I was dying. Like, I was, I was dying to get in there and like start, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, I'm sorry. And then, so, so go get back to what you were saying. No, no, no. It's just working with her was incredible, and she gave me this unbelievably incredible instrument foundation for my instrument moving mm-hmm. in moving into college. Um, and other people had influences on my voice. If we're talking about my voice and not my acting right now, but there was a teacher named Jane Seaman. Um, at the school and she was like adjunct faculty and I just they put me with her as a private um, student so I went to her apartment once a week and worked with her Um, and I think that was my sophomore year and she gave me my mix Um, that's like a part of the voice that puts together the soprano with the belt so like to give you an example I'm I'm doing this more for the listeners than you guys, but you might find something interesting here too. Um, you know, like Ethel Merman, ah, da, 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 and then Julie Andrews, ah, da, 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 right? These two separate voices. And 
how do you like go from you know having the depth of the voice down here to up here you know um as mm-hmm. one continuous instrument without going la 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 la, 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 la you know like yeah. you have to have this in between even right? out combination synthesis yeah. i love that term yeah. you're finding your mix i love that yeah that's like that's what they call it in the world of musical theater i don't know what they call it in opera another world but like they call it the i mix. love that and so yeah 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 and so jane seaman gave me my mix and she gave me my mix with um with the e with the e sound you know e mm-hmm. you know and p- placing it in my mask and learning how to sing in the hemisphere to sound like i was belting but not belting. So right. that was like such an incredible part of my vocal journey. And then I had this other voice teacher. If we're sticking with voice, why not? You know, it's it's a podcast and we're voice actors. Um, I had this <laughs> other teacher, Alex Corey. Um, you guys are going to love this story because I was in Alex's class. And she's kind of like, just yell on pitch. You know, she's very uh, nasal and abrasive and funny as fuck. You know, she's just funny as hell. Um and I was singing, Can You Read My Mind? You know, from Superman. Can you <laughs> read my mind? You know, do you know what it is? So, and I sang it like in a, like a belty mix. You know, I had learned the mix and I was like, I'm not going to hurt myself. And then she was like, what would happen if you just yelled that? Just yell it. And <laughs> like, just yell it on. And I was like, yell it? She's like, Belting is yelling on pitch with support. Just yell it, you know. And I was like, I don't think I can. Like, this was like E's and F's, right? This was like at the time that Rent was was happening, was just starting. So musical theater people were just learning how to belt like pop singers. We hadn't done that yet, you know. Um, But they wanted us to learn a pop song. So this is the pop song that I chose. And I remember her just making me do that and me being terrified you know, just terrified. And I did it. I yelled the whole thing on pitch and it was so loud and so powerful that my, my class was in tears, you know, and this, this girl said, they were, (laughs) there you go. Yeah. I was waiting for you to say that, Dan. I I knew you would. I I gave you too much of an opportunity, but this, um, this actress, um, Sam DeSerce, was in the front row of the class, and she was, like, really, really upset. Like, <laughs> you know, and, and, and Alex was like, Sam, like, why are you crying? Like, what's, what's, what's wrong? Like, what are you feeling? She's like, <laughs> I just never knew, you know, that Erica could, 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 could sound like that and, and just be so powerful, you know? And, like, and Aww. you know, all of us were crying because it was just, like, In the acting school, in acting school, you have these moments, these breakthroughs together, and you celebrate Uh each other's breakthroughs. You celebrate Mm -hmm. each other's successes. People, you know, came out of the closet during class, you know, things Mm -hmm. like that. And, like, we just held them and or let them sit in their space of the the fear of doing that. And um, this was a moment for our class where I had a breakthrough and they were all there for it. And it was like a beautiful moment and it's all because alex told me to yell on pitch <laughs> that's that's awesome i uh i hate to do this but i think to keep these episodes more digestible in length we should take a pause for now okay even though yeah. i love the conversation we're having yep that good, sounds good. Fantastic. i agree mm-hmm. all right awesome and uh erica uh, we can't wait to hear more from you and keep the the balance of this conversation going. And to all of you listeners and followers out there, thank you for joining us this far in our lovely time with Erica Schroeder. And we'll continue this in our next installment of The Heart of the Cards, where you can always depend on a conversation about creativity, inspiration, and dealing with what you're doing. Hit the like button. Subscribe. (laughs) Thanks for listening to The Heart of the Cards with Dan Green and Eric Stewart. We hope this conversation in some way spoke to you. Whatever your journey, we look forward to crossing paths again in the next episode. This is Veronica Taylor, and on behalf of Adromeda Productions, we wish you well. Adromeda, always a sound choice.